I never should have taken that map. It wasn't a map from any tavern or trading post. This one was stitched from the skin of a man who once sailed with Captain Morrow, the most feared pirate of his time. The symbols on it pointed to a place no sailor would dare venture, Dreadwater Isle. Legends say the island is cursed, home to the restless souls of Morrow's crew. They were slaughtered there, betrayed by their captain, and their bodies left to rot while Morrow escaped with their share of the treasure. But the sea doesn't forget, and neither did they. Their spirits haunt the isle, guarding the treasure they were denied in life. The few who tried to claim it were never seen again or returned, driven mad by the horrors they witnessed. But greed clouded my judgment. The promise of wealth beyond imagining was too tempting. And so, with a crew of desperate men, we set sail for Dreadwater Isle. The journey was uneventful, too uneventful. The sea was calm, the wind steady, as if the ocean itself was holding its breath. By the time the island came into view, the sun was dipping below the horizon, casting long shadows over the jagged cliffs. The water around the isle was eerily still, reflecting the blood-red sky. We anchored the ship and rowed to shore in silence, the air thick with dread. The island was deathly quiet. As we made our way through the dense undergrowth, I felt we were being watched. Every rustle of leaves sent my heart racing. The trees seemed to close in around us, their twisted branches reaching out like skeletal fingers. It wasn't long before we found the remains of Morrow's crew. Their bones were scattered across a clearing, bleached white by the sun. But what chilled me was how they were arranged in a circle as if sitting in council when death claimed them. In the center was a stone altar, with a rusted cutlass stained with blood. Briggs, an old sailor, picked up the cutlass. The moment his fingers touched the hilt, a cold wind swept through the clearing, carrying the faint sound of ghostly laughter. Briggs froze, terror in his eyes, but it was too late. The wind grew stronger, and with it came voices, low guttural whispers from all around us. Leave this place, they hissed. Your souls are not welcome here. Panic set in, and the men muttered among themselves, their courage faltering. But I was not turning back, not after coming this far. I spread the map on the altar, my hands trembling. The symbols glowed faintly in the dying light, pointing to a cave beneath the cliffs. Ignoring my crew's growing unease, I led them to the cave. It was a narrow opening in the rock, barely wide enough to squeeze through. The air inside was thick with decay, the walls slick with moisture, and the floor littered with bones. The cave wound deeper into the earth, twisting like the guts of a beast. The deeper we went, the darker it became, until we had to light torches. But the flames only made the darkness press closer, as if it were alive, hungry for our fear. Finally, we reached the chamber. It was a vast space, the walls lined with shelves of gold and jewels. At the center was a stone sarcophagus, its lid carved with the likeness of Captain Morrow. The treasure was there, more than I'd ever dreamed of. But as I stepped forward, the ground began to tremble. The sarcophagus lid slid open, and from within rose the skeletal figure of Captain Morrow. His empty eye sockets burned with unholy fire, his bony hand clutching a sword that pulsed with malevolent energy. You dare take what is mine, he rasped, his voice echoing off the walls. The men screamed, dropping their torches and scrambling for the exit, but the cave had other plans. The ground cracked and heaved, sending stones tumbling. The walls closed in, trapping us with the vengeful captain. 
The air grew thick with brimstone, and from the shadows emerged Morrow's crew, their rotten flesh hanging from their bones, their hollow eyes filled with rage. I grabbed a handful of gold, but as I touched it, a searing pain shot through my hand. The gold turned to ash, and the agony spread through my arm. I screamed, dropping to my knees as Morrow's crew closed in, their bony fingers reaching for my throat. Just as they were about to claim me, Briggs, clutching the cutlass, shouted, Back to the depths with you! He swung the blade, and to my astonishment, it sliced through the ghostly forms as if they were flesh and blood. The spirits wailed, recoiling from the blade, but Morrow wasn't so easily defeated. With a flick of his wrist, he sent Briggs crashing into the wall, the cutlass flying from his grasp. Morrow turned his burning gaze on me, and I knew there was no escape. The ground opened beneath me, and I fell, tumbling into the abyss as the chamber collapsed. When I awoke, I was alone. The cave was gone, the treasure lost forever. My crew was dead, their bodies buried. The only thing that remained was the cutlass, glowing with an eerie light.